So welcome to one of the greatest attacking games by Judith Polgar in her game against Vichy Anand in 1999. We're going to have a look through it now. The game began with e e4, c5 Sicilian defense. And we had knight of six, knight of three, d6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight of six, attacking the pawn. And then we get knight c3, defending the pawn. We get a6, and then Judah Polgar plays uh, bishop e3. We get e6, and then g4, which is a very sharp move, very sharp indeed. Then we get e5, attacking Judah Polgar's knight, having to move. So then we get knight f5. Then we get g6. So if you're playing this game, what would you do here? Uh, maybe you think might move your knight here, might bring it back. Um, what would you do? Well, Judith Polgar, as we said, this is one of her most attacking games that she ever was involved in. Um, ends up going g5. So this is in fact a book move now, would you believe? But back in those days, it was not a book move. Uh, attacking the knight, um, giving up your own knight. And indeed, a man takes... And due to Pulgar here, um, you would think, okay, well, she's going to capture back the knight. Queen will capture, take back the pawn. We've opened up this file for the rook, and we'll get the queen out the way, and we'll try and castle. Is that what happens? Well, no. Um, due to Pulgar plays uh, e to f5, leaving the, the knight hanging. Now, she's down a, a full piece here. Um, and... Now, Vichy Anand, instead of deciding to get rid of the attacking threat to his knight, decides, instead of popping back, goes d5, which is a brilliant move. Can you see why it is a brilliant move? Well, very simply, in the next move, uh, you're going to be forking these two pieces here, um, which means you're going to win a piece. So a brilliant move by Vichy Anand. And you may have seen there's four brilliant moves in this game. This is an outstanding game with a lot to learn. Uh, then we get uh, Judith playing uh, queen to f3, deciding not to uh, bring back one of the, uh, the bishop out of the way, so when this is pushed, you could move the knight, decides to sack a piece, despite being a piece down. So Anand goes d4, then Judith goes castles long, castles long, so obviously pinning uh, this pawn, because otherwise you give up the queen. So. What could Vishyanan do here? Well, he does a brilliant move. Knight at d7, unbreaking the pin of the pawn and thus guaranteeing that he will back the pawn, that he'll win another piece. Now, it's amazing because Anand still hasn't taken back this knight to safety. So Judith now plays bishop to d2, and Vishy takes pawn to c3. So now we see Judith is down two pieces. She's given up two knights and a pawn, and she's got three pawns in return. Um, so what happens next? Does Vissi decide to take his knight back? No, he actually goes bishop to g7, which is actually a mistake, as we can see. Um, but amazingly, <laughs> again, uh, Judith decides not to take the the piece that's hanging, and instead plays rook to g1, which is a great move. And here we see that uh, Vissi decides to castle here. And finally, <laughs> uh, here we see Judith taking on f6 and getting one of the pieces back. So now she's got a knight and three pawns for two knights and a pawn. And she's attacking, of course, uh, this bishop here, so obviously we see a Vichy goes queen to f6. Now, we here we get queen to e3. Now, why is queen to e3? It says it's a mistake, but what was Judah thinking here? Well, we see a wonderful sequence of moves here. Say if Vichy plays b5, we see the wonderful move here. Rook takes d7, and if you take back you get the wonderful move of bishop uh, to e5. And if the queen takes, 
Well, you take back with your queen, and because of the pin of the rook, you cannot take back, and you win uh, material. So a really interesting trap that um, Judah had set, but Vichy did not fall into it, because Vichy goes h7, and h7 breaks the pin of the rook, and so that means that this combination no longer works. Um, but a very interesting trap for sure. Then we get f4, and we get queen to b6. Now Vichy is thinking, I'd love to change off uh, our queens here, um, but Judith doesn't want to do that. Instead, she attacks, threatening checkmate. Then we get queen back to h6. And now we get, what a great move this is, another brilliant move by Judith, because if queen takes, well, then obviously we've got mate in one. Um, so instead, forced to play f6. Now, this pawn push might not seem like an awful lot at this moment in time, but it is going to come back to haunt Judith later in the game because of blocking off uh, the queen side. Now, here we get an excellent move again. Um, we get bishop to d2. We get e4. Then we get uh, bishop to c4 by Judith, blocking off the g8 uh, square for the king or for the rook. Then we get b5. And now we get this interesting uh, move to attack the knight. Obviously, we won the fence. So now Judith uh, gets the response from Vichy, which is a7. Then we see Judith goes to c6. Uh, we get a5, pushing the pawn. Bit of a slow attack here, but um, then we get e3. Uh, attacking the rook on a7. And so we now get bishop, or sorry, rook, uh, moving to b7. Now here we get d5. Um, threatening a possible uh, attack on on this pawn and then winning the rook afterwards. So then we get rook to b8. And after this, we see c7. And say for some reason that um, Anand moved his knight, well then he would lose the piece here and he couldn't take back with the queen because it would be checkmate. So we see that Vichy's under a little bit of pressure here and uh, decides to continue attacking and then finally in the game you can see that judah decides to play a bit of a defensive move stop the pawn push and uh, encourage to close up uh, things on uh, around her king now we get rook to uh, b5 attacking the uh, bishop so we get c6 and again now we've got two attackers um, coming on to this one defended piece so now Vichy decides to go to rook to f5. So if you were playing here, I think we would mostly, most likely all just do that and you win a piece. But wait till you see this incredible move um, by Judith Polgar. So can you see a way to win a rook here out of this tactical uh, situation? Well, we are faced with a truly brilliant move of rook to c8. And can you see why? Well, rook to c8, you get rook take c8 uh, back, and then you and then you go, oh, sorry, then you go bishop to d7, attacking both the rooks and guaranteeing to win one. Brilliant tactical play. A uh, really, really beautiful by uh, Judah Polgar. Takes back with the rook, then we get rook d1, and we get g8, and then we see Judith goes to g8, and here Vichy actually resigns in the game. Now, why does he resign? Well, the game could have continued in this way. g6, rook to f8, bishop uh, going to f8, queen taking the free pawn here at e4, uh, rook uh, moving to try and trade off the queens. We get check, queen covers, check again. And uh, this is pretty much it, because if you cover with the queen, you lose the rook. And if you cover this way, you lo also lose the rook. And if you cover this way, well, then you go rook f8, queen takes, and then you take 
the rook here as well. So a really wonderful win by Judah Pulgar. Lots of attacking play and really a lot of lessons to learn and digest. But four brilliant moves, all of them outstanding in their own right. And a really great game. And thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, please subscribe.